Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Idol Threat Wrestling Podcast. Your host, Joey Idol, co-host, Mike Holmes. And you see, we have a third person at the table, Matt. So Matt, he's a wrestler in Florida City Wrestling, as well as a trainer at K&M. We work there. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, it's I'm Matt Trox. What am I right now? I am quadruple. Because it's a tasty place. I... 2018 Doug Chevalier Memorial Champion. Was that your? Was that the last time you were in the ring, Matt? No. No. That's last the last time I saw you in the ring. But last let everybody know you were in the ring. Really? For where we were that at? Can and Wrestling Dojo. All right. All right. Mike was so. there. No, I was. No, you weren't. You were on Monday. Yeah, I was there Monday and Thursday. So teacher, student here. Uh, he's just that substitute teacher. Substitute teacher. Is he a good teacher, Mike? Yeah, actually, he's very good. He helps me a lot. So, and he's going to help out with the show today. Uh, it is June 7th, if I'm correct. It's the, it was the Saudi Super Showdown. Um, and, uh, that was today. We watched that in its entirety and gave our predictions on the last show. So we're going to get to that that part of the show soon. Yep. First, we're gonna do this day in wrestling. Mike's gonna take it on this day in wrestling history. Today in wrestling history, 24 years ago today in Helico, Tennessee, the Thugs, Tony Anthony and Tracy Smothers defeated the dynamic duo, Al Snow and Unabomb. <laughs> one bomb. For, for those of you who don't speak Spanish, that's one, one bomb. AKA Kane to uh, win. AKA Quentin Jacobs. Mayor. Mayor, indeed. Uh, uh, Knoxville, ten Knoxville? No, Maine? not Knoxville, but it's in no Tennessee, right? It's, it, it's a county in Tennessee. Knox yeah. County. It's Knox okay. County. There you go. It's something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're correct. Uh, AKA the Christmas Creature. That's they won you. the Smoky Mountain Wrestling Tag Team Championships and there is a little bit of trivial history today, so uh, with that, the uh, reason why this is a little special is because it was the only title change in Smoky Mountain Wrestling history, uh, well, for the Tag Team Championships, that didn't involve the Rock and Roll Express or the Heavenly Bodies. No managed by, or no, the Rock and Roll Express, you said? Yes. Okay, not the Midnight Express, my bad. Sorry, I was going to say about by Jim Cornette, but that was Smoky Mountain. This Cornette lover over here. I'm just mentioning that it was Smoky Mountain. Cornette Cornet. Mark. Cornette <laughs> Mark. I'm a member of the cult of Cornette for sure. All right, and other than that, I'm we just have a few birthdays to go to through. Today is Mick Foley's birthday. Happy birthday, Mick Foley. You get a round of applause. Happy birthday, Mick. It is also Howard Finkel's birthday! Can you get a round of applause? To the Fink, hopefully it gets better. Why are you applying to someone who's born? I don't, because people do that at, when you get born. It's I, a respect thing. I've never understood, understood that. Me either, but it's also... Well, now what? She's not going to get a clap? <laughs> we got, we got <laughs> one. The only other person's not going to get a clap. Now. We got one more birthday we got. <laughs> I feel obligated not to. <laughs> Uh, we got Taylor Hendricks' birthday as well. Can am an alumni. Yeah, I believe I saw her. Your Matt worked, uh, you worked a match with her? Well, we played around at school. Okay. She has big red hair. It was fun. All right, and that's pretty well it for today in wrestling history. Today is uh, Prince's birthday. Today? Yeah. Well, happy birthday, Prince. Happy no, birthday. no. Prince. Oh, oh Prince. Prince. Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't guys okay, like Prince out of here. Purple, purple Rain. Purple Rain. Oh, wow. Well, wow. Okay, okay. Yeah. Happy birthday to Snuck Prince. Like you guys. Prince, can anyone relate him to wrestling somehow? Artist form. Oh, uh, yeah, he like saw it. Didn't he sing at, uh, didn't he sing at one, of, one of the WrestleManias? No, it was the Super Bowl, I think you're thinking of. No, wait. No, no. I don't think he was. Pass my phone. I'm doing this live Google. Oh, I'm pretty sure he didn't, but I think you're mistaken. The Super Bowl 2007. I, you might be right. You might be right. All right, all right. It was a good one, actually. After years of tripe and Janet Jackson's tits, we had uh, Prince do a pretty good job at the Super Bowl. Uh, what game's that? Super Bowl. It was Super Bowl 2007, Prince? Like the bowling alley? No, like Prince the, performed at the bowling alley. That'd be pretty awesome. awesome. 
It's taken a long time, man. Oh my. He didn't. I'm yeah. gonna take that as a he didn't appear at WrestleMania. Oh. If we could relate him to wrestling, uh, Goldust was the uh, artist formerly known as Goldust. They did that angle for a little while. Bill Hong and Prince Ikea. And Princess I. And Prince Ikea. Prince Ikea. Prince Prince yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Took Prince right. as his new gimmick. The artist formerly known as. They went enter the Prince. Music. This is eating up a lot of time. Wow, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm gonna say no on that WrestleMania appearance. Let's move on, Mike. Can I a list of celebrities involved in WrestleMania? Oh, you're not gonna go through every one, we got it? No, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go through the whole thing. Butterbean. I'm gonna go through the list. And Elvira. Bob Euchre. Hey, look at that. Okay, Impact Wrestling, Friday and Saturday, Saturday, July 19th and 20th, St. Clair College Gymnasium. Oh, yeah, that's a big show coming up for sure. We've been pumping up for the last, uh, well, I think since the show started, we've probably been plugging that show, but Rob Van Dam will be in Windsor, I think the first time ever Rob Van Dam in Windsor Ring Wrestling. Oh, no, at the WFCU Center, TNA had him uh, a couple times. I'm not sure. It's the first time we'd be at St. Clair, I think. In Windsor. I saw him in Windsor at the WLCU Center when TNA did those few shows. Sorry. If I remember, they, uh, TNA ran a few shows at the WLCU Center. I think I was on the West Coast then. Are you still going on this, Mike? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, I'm wrong. Yeah, okay. Oh, anyway, what was after that? Let's get back. Sorry, it's all you. you. It's all good. Okay, okay so we're going to be mentioning Prince's birthday. Yeah, all of that. What a, what a spurt <laughs> that was thrown out the show. All right, well, in that case, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And let's move on to... Uh, John and I went on an adventure today, and we found... You got a pencil topper. WWE Bushies. Now, uh, some of them are going to dark. Which makes no sense, can I add? Because this is a pencil topper. I don't know about you guys, but... I don't do a lot of writing in the dark, so I don't think I'll ever see my... Well, I'm hoping I get a glow in the dark one, though, because it's one of four, and you can get the... It looks like the Macho Man, the Glow in the Dark Ultimate Warrior, the Toxic Avenger, and uh, I think that is Randy Orton. It says Randy Orton. That wasn't the Toxic Avenger, sorry, it's the Rock. The Rock's right, so the so I'm hoping for this Golden Ultimate Warrior, though. That's who I want. The right? count of three. One. I use my key. Two. Three. Aww. I guess I gotta use those teeth too. Who do I got? And I got. And bam! I got, got a glow in the dark one! Yeah. Oh, I got Kobe Kingston, WWE Champion. WWE, I got glow in the dark, champion. the rock. You got, a, you, you, you got a rock? I got glow in the dark, the rock. The rock. Yes. The Toxic Avenger. The Toxic Avenger! Sweet. Kobe Kingston. I got a Kobe too. We got two Kobe's. You got, he's got another one. Let's just see. Oh. If the dollar store just has a whole bunch of Kofi's, then you got a rock, which is pretty cool. I think they're a little rarer than going in the dark ones. Nope. Maybe it's not no. this one. It was just a dollar store impulse buy. Exactly. Why right. not? It's I brought a WWE. Too many guys in black trunks. I wanted an ultimate water. Yeah, there we go. Is it, <laughs> is it a Kofi? <laughs> it's a Kofi. Awesome. Damn you, Dollar Emma! I have uh, three Kofis. Three Kofis. So, looks like we all got a Kofi. We all got a yeah, Kofi. Yeah. Get a, we got our own little. That's a consolation prize. We got our own bag. You get little, your. Almost a new day. You get. Uh, it's a new morning. Is it a, a yesterday? It's a, a new yesterday. But that surprise yes, is coming it is. on. It is your very own oh, Kobe Kingston. Thank was. you, Dollarama. For, yes, it was. You know, we had this discussion when we were in the store, too. Are they all going to be the same ones? And. Besides, we got a rock, which is cool. Yep. Gold. We got a pen, so we were already halfway there. Oh, and uh, yeah, three Kofi's. So there you go. Speaking of Kofi Kingston, oh. though, I think that should lead us into our Saudi Super Showdown reviews. Look at you. <laughs> or, yeah, that was pretty good, right? I pulled that one up. Um, okay. our, our predictions, how they went down. And we had, you saw in the last show, me and Mike both went back and forth and predicted. But there was also a third man in the room, Double D. He's not here right now, so I don't know what I'm pointing at. But uh, he's usually our cameraman. And he's uh, he had to pull a double shift tonight, so he's not here. But he actually won 
the predictions for this right. for this one. He only didn't predict correctly the uh, he, he he predicted Ali to win the battle royal, which he didn't, and he picked Lashley to beat Braun Strowman, That's as he true. did. But since he's not here, I mean, he technically he's the career champion. But me and Mike will just go through ours. And, and plus, the points keep going, you know, forever until we decide to stop doing it, or maybe first to hundred. Right now, though, Double D, that so title is yours, no but worries. you gotta come on and get it. Oh, there will always be wrestling, so probably just till we're dead. Mm. I think it should just go on until wrestling ends. So whoever basically the dies, end of wrestling. Yep. Whoever dies last out of all three of us is basically the champion, I guess. Yeah, Unless right. somebody just keeps on landsliding and landsliding, but... but I did pretty bad today. We'll yeah. start, I will start out with that. Um, I don't remember the exact order. I watched the whole event. Um, the I, first match was the Universal title match. That's right, with Seth Rollins and... Uh, Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin. I always forget the Applebee waiter's name. The Applebee waiter. I, it yeah. look like an he pointed that out to me, and I gotta yes. go with that. I, I shout out that's to... His uh, thing. Shout out to uh, oh, many nice. places, probably wrestling. Was he a Raider? What culture WWE for that? Um, I'm good. So uh, that uh, match, um, I don't really have too much to say about that match. Honestly. Well, we'll so, just, just give our picks. All right, we all picked Seth Rollins across the board. We knew kind Perfect. of stuff. And I think oh, you God. mentioned it on last show. We didn't go there, but the prediction or was that Unless maybe was he was going to use yeah. a cash in, and Lesnar came out to cash in. And yeah, that was uh, a good bonus play just for the attempt. He tried, but uh, what happened was he, uh, you know, he fell. Or Paul Heyman fell, dropped the briefcase, distracted Brock to pick up the briefcase, and the low blow by Seth Rollins. And Lesnar never officially got a chance to cash in or get the match official. Exactly. Because, and I got to give a shout out to Paul Heyman on that one. It looked legit that he fell and just, you know, but he managed to get the briefcase to the middle of the ring where it needed to be too. Good That's on Paul. True. Good Big worker. Fan. We have a big Paul Heyman fan, and then, yeah, so, basically, uh, Rollins beat the crap out of, uh... uh Lesnar? Lesnar, yeah, right? Until, uh, until, uh, he could, he could cash in, basically. And Rollins left the ring, and no cash in, and Rollins is still a champion. And Drew Lesnar, it's still gonna be a Brock party up in there. So, uh, side note on fantasy booking, I have this weird idea that maybe it would be really cool if... Imagine they did let Baron Corbin steal a roll of victory, but have the his championship reign literally last less Seconds. than a minute. Yep. So basically, Brock comes out within like ding ding ding, and then da 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 da, and then he comes out, boom, picks him up, F five done, pins him in at the forty six second mark, exactly at the forty six second mark. So his title reign is exactly forty six seconds for no odd reason, just forty six. And then he would walk around, and he would just add real heel heat, like not the we don't like Baron Corbin heel heat, the real heel heat, like because he would parade around and I'm a former Universal Champion, you need to respect me, you know, just at, but like it was 46 seconds, but it counts, you know what I mean? Yep. And then that would obviously throw the cash in away, but it would make a really good cash in as well as go down in the history books for potentially the shortest Universal title reign ever. Well, how many, yeah, sure. How many champions has it been? It bounces around pretty quick these days, though. So, I don't think 46 seconds. I like the, uh, how Lesnar attempted to cash in and I did like didn't work out. Uh, I think they should keep him kind of pursuing Seth Rollins and not being able to, for whatever reason, how long, I mean, how long you can drag it out is another story, but True. we know WWE creative, so they're so creative. Right? Well, in the so. future, I'm thinking maybe he'll do... Do you think he'll wait all the way till before next WrestleMania or like, or Money in the Bank or? No. SummerSlam no. maybe? But it would be cool if he could uh, do it again. I'm trying to see your water. Um, it may be a good six months of water. chasing after and not being able to. That might be long, I don't know. I like long buildups, personally. If you can do it, why not? The problem is all the pay-per-views, right? In between, Slow that notes. they want to have it end at this pay-per-view. That's why it's always better with the four or five big pay-per-views in my opinion. Yeah, I like the slow burn as well. Um, I don't even know what the next big review is, but I'm sure these predictions for uh, these, I will be watching. It's called like Battleground or Battle Stomp. Proving Ground, Stomping Ground. Stomping Ground. Stomping ground. Or Battleground. No, like, it's Stomping Ground because I saw that last night. Like ground. And I was like, like that's, a, that's a stupid name, but hey, what do I know? It's not great balls of fire. 
Yeah, that was alright. Actually, right. I think I like that name. I like that name better. Stomping Ground is just, they've already had Battleground, Proving Ground, right? Like, true. Whatever, whatever. Okay, well, uh, next match? Or you want any, any, any say on these? Yeah. I didn't even see it, man. What's yeah, the next I match? Yeah, I with my puppy. The next match? Yeah, the puppy. No, no, oh. the next match. Uh, okay. What was the next match? Was uh, Finn Balor and and Balor, uh, Balor, um, Andrade. Andrade. That was the second match. I kind of missed that one because I was doing some stuff for our on the house. Uh, I guess honestly, I didn't care enough to like make an effort to watch it. I don't well, know did who Andrade you see, is. Did you see the entrance at least. Uh, a little bit. The, the, the demon always makes a good entrance. Uh, I'm not about the pageantry. I'm not about them. it. I'm not about it. I want wrestling. Oh, uh, you didn't watch it. Either. I, I he was on his way here. Was, it's kind of late. I was literally on my way. You know, here. it's it was on at two o'clock. The show. I got I got home to watch it, but I didn't. Really obviously, early, I know it was early for a lot, but I mean, Shoot. sorry, I lied. I wasn't playing with my puppy. I was like, I'm not gonna chat him. There you go. I think. Would you rather spend a thousand days in Chatham or watch a WWE Saudi Super Showdown again? I've never. Watched well, you didn't watch it, but would you rather be in Chatham for a thousand days or watch uh, the Super Showdown? That's a good one. I don't know. Probably still couldn't get booked there. I don't know. I just I couldn't imagine wanting to be in Chatham for too long. No offense, Chatham. I just don't know what to do at all. They closed wheels in, and that was like the it's only. It's a casino thing. now. Oh, cool. So there is something to do out there. Forget that, Chatham. Sorry, well, I'm it's not. not a casino yet. Okay. So I, sorry, sorry, Chatham. Yeah, that's a chill lady. I'm not, I guess I'll be healed in Chatham. Um, anyways, that match. Our prediction all was Balor across the board. Boom. So yeah, we, we all got game. that one too. Always. Um, I don't really have a memory of that match. It was hard. The show didn't. It wasn't drawing. I watched the pre-show too. I saw the Usos and uh, sure the Revival. That was an okay match. That was alright. It was. Uh, I don't know. It was hard to get into wrestling at 2 o'clock in the afternoon when it was one of the nicest days that we've had. Such a beautiful day out. In uh, Windsor. Anyways. So, yeah, that match. We all got it. We all were Baylor. So, brings us to the next. I say it however I want. I'll correct you every time. What I want. You do that. It's going to get worse. Full we'll agree to guys. disagree. Okay. Next match. How do you disagree? I believe it was Roman Reigns versus Shane McMahon. I believe you're correct. We both had it up, upset on this car, on this one. We both had chosen Roman Reigns. I thought it was correct. You know, when I thought about it more and more though, and then when Drew McIntyre came out, I was like, Shane's gonna win this one. I think it was obvious from there that he was gonna something, and he did that big boot maneuver that he has. Claymore. The Claymore. The Claymore. The Claymore, and uh, Claymore. took out. Did he knock he took out. out Claymore. He took out. Uh, the Scottish Roman Reigns. He took out Roman Damn. Reigns. Took out Scottish Roman thing. Reigns, and that was the match. Uh, not a very good one. I don't really care to see Shane McMahon matches anymore. I don't know about you guys. They were fun in the Attitude Era, and it was crazy. You're like, this guy, he's the boss's son. He doesn't really need to do this stuff, but you think he still needs to be there? But, Dad, I can wrestle. He can. I can. He's alright. He's entertaining. Everything like that, but I, uh, I could do I the, the matches. Right. After WrestleMania, and he but, literally... He smacked, he suplexed uh, Miz onto a crash pad, because that's what he did. They didn't try to hide it to the fans or anything. It was him superplexing on a place crash pad. I kind of gave up on it. The fact that they're almost insulting your intelligence by, well, it's not even staged anymore. It literally, you could tell, and from the camera angle and everything, that it was just straight up a crash pad. Not that cool. That's my opinion. So what I don't get about Shane McMahon is what he's doing is fine. But why is he doing it now in life? He's yeah. like what? Forty five? Probably something like that. I would now, say yeah, so probably around forty five. Why didn't he do this when he was younger? He did, he just jumped off other and, things. Well yeah, no, I know that. But like when he was younger and didn't have like health issues. Didn't he have some sort of weird stomach issue? I don't I don't so, know about that personally, I have no idea. I don't know, I feel like he's in like he's like a bigger guy and he's like in like way better shape, but he's just he's really sweaty. Like he, he I don't know. I, I just I, I was a big shame in the attitude era I was a huge shame fan. I loved the corporation. I was 
Yeah, you know, like, I say you were a rock miss. kid or you were a Stone Cold kid in our day, but I was Vince McMahon. I only went with The Rock because he was Vince McMahon. I was always an uh, outsider against what everybody else liked, so everybody was Stone Cold. I was like, a heel forever. Vince, I am. I'm a heel forever. I just always Vince was the best bad guy maybe of all time, but Shane is not. I don't. There's not. I don't. The character is there. A character there. I don't see anything really. Like, he's just the owner's son. I don't think the that sucks. I don't think they, uh... Oh, yes. the kid. Well, I, I'm just saying, I don't, <laughs> the problem is I, I think I mostly have is I don't think the family needs to be there anymore on TV. Anyway, True. that's mine. But yeah. it is. With the plethora of talent that they have. So Shane won that one, though. So what is the tally of score so far? 7 to 2. Oh, I, it's October. Well, you got... We both were tied. You got, we, we both got... Two right and one wrong so far. And what about what about uh, cameraman? Double D was flawless up to this point, actually. But uh, just at that, we're gonna just run to a uh, quick commercial break before we come back here with the final couple. That's cool, guys. We'll be right back. Didn't see that. Hi, we at the Idol Podcast have decided to change up the format, maybe just a little bit. We promise to bring you the best in interviews, the best in wrestling stories, whatever we can. But we think we just need to step it up just a little bit. Why? Well, mainly, well, once I snapped into Slim Jim, and uh, I just kind of never snapped out. Oh yeah. We still plan on bringing to you the best in wrestling news, the best wrestling interviews, especially from the Windsor area. And we plan on doing this multiple times a week. So keep an eye out for the Idle Threat Podcast on YouTube. Probably wondered why we have this globe. Well, we just think it makes us look smart. We here at the Idle Threat Podcast used to like Donald Trump. Then we found out he wasn't really a wrestler. If you like your sports fake and your wrestling reel, then make sure you're checking us out right here on YouTube at the Idle Threat Wrestling Podcast. We found right here on this very network. Or check us out on Instagram, Idle Threat Productions, or at Facebook, you can find me, Joey Idol. Thanks for watching. All right, so welcome back. Thanks for that, uh, sponsor. We'll go back to our uh, the next match. Professionalism, guys. Can I? Uh, was the next match? I think was finally you showed up. It was the Lucha versus the Lars Sullivan match, the three on one handicap match. Yep. Where it was, I picked Lars Sullivan. You picked Lucha House Party. It was kind of a you know a weird match the ending there. All the Lucha guys started. So like, here's the thing. It's a three on one handicap game. match. And in a handicap match, as far as I know, there's like no, like they're generally tornado-y, unless other which way specified, but I thought like there was like a handicap match that had no DQ. No, I think a traditional handicap match, though, the three-on-one is a tag format. Every time it's like a heel, a heel like made handicap match, they're always like, they can just do whatever they want sometimes. Maybe I'm... I'm thinking of something else. It's all crazy yeah, make them ups and as they goes, I guess. But Sometimes the rules are just like, what are they? Like, you know? I know, and yeah, okay, that's so, just it. So you're saying it had a bad ending. You it didn't, it didn't have a bad ending, it just it didn't give me my point in my in our, in our wrestle predictions, so like that sucks. But well, yeah, and we're so happy. they beat him down, they beat him down and the referee disqualified the Lucha House Party. Mm -hmm. He couldn't get in control of the match, basically, what was happening because of them Because they just kept on beating him down and beating him down. And over and over, and then he was just like, "All right, well, nobody's leaving the ring, so ding, ding, ding." 
Yeah, and then yeah. they continued on after them kind of getting, you know, and over on the match, like, like, beating right, up Lars yeah, Sullivan, yeah, they end up losing all their momentum because Lars Sullivan comes out of the ring. He just kind of smashes them anyway, so he got the yeah. win and ended up murdering them anyway. So maybe just have a clean finish in the ring. That was I a don't know. Weird. Yeah, it's like he won by it wasn't TV a good match. And really? also came out on top in the post-match beatdown. So yeah, I really I don't know what they're doing there. But I, I didn't I didn't like well up until this point in the card I really didn't like much on the show. So that didn't do anything to wow. help really. Saw a lot as good as Mouthbuster a little bit. <clears throat> Hope he's all right. So what, what, what? The next match was it Orton and Triple H, or was it uh, Lashley and Braun Strowman? It was Lashley and Braun Strowman for sure, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I went with a no contest, which didn't happen. Do you pick? Do you pick Braun Strowman and Braun Strowman? No, did? I, uh, yes, I did. Yeah, you won that, uh, and uh, yeah, Double D had Bobby Lashley. Yeah. So we all went different ways on this, and it ended with Braun getting the clean win. Oh, Leo Rush there. No, he wasn't no. on our own side either, which he called last week, saying with that play, but he wasn't he wasn't there. I don't know. We checked his profile the other day uh, on, on the WWE Universe, yeah. universe and it was well, missing. It was the only, I was like, oh, maybe oh. maybe all the profiles were down, but no, we checked him, and, and he had gotten into some kind of backstage heat okay. at some point. I don't know. Remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah there was some complaining about the after the WrestleMania. We're talking after, the search bar. Leo. I don't remember, but he was complaining backstage about something. I kind of think of him in the doghouse. So okay. I don't know. Sir. But he wasn't out there. <coughs> it's hard to say with the Saudi show that uh, but maybe he just refused to work there. We have a the official profile. Let's see. Let's see. Is it still down? Yes, it is. It's huh. very much still down. It was name still there. So I uh, we don't know, but his, we checked that. It was two days ago, three just days ago, show, and it's been down ever since. So what's going on with Leo Rush? I don't know. I don't watch WWE. I'm getting back into it. This guy's helped me. It's hard, you know. You've heard. I've been complaining for weeks. And look at every time I try to give it a chance, though, I, I got the Saudi Super Showdown. And uh, Aaron Corbin, and his, his rating works system, just fine. so his rating system, skid marks or check marks. I'm gonna give this one a skid mark so far on the show. We're getting into bigger matches now, though. Here's the here's what the Saudi crowd's been waiting for. All that uh, all thing. The Attitude Era, or the Ruthless Aggression Era, that they missed. It seems like they really get over for those matches. They want to see, you know, like the dream match that's happened before. We've seen it before. Triple H, Randy Orton. Um, we went, I, I went. I don't know if I've ever seen that one. We went, you'd have to dig deep, deep in the, the WWE We talked about it on the last episode, the part where he was part of Evolution, and then... Randy won the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, he won the title from Chris Benoit, Benoit, I believe. Benoit, and he was jealous. Triple H was, he was sitting up, uh, or he was sitting up on Batista's shoulders, shoulders. And Triple H was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's just like, just kidding. Dude. And then Batista was like, all right, <laughs> bye. And then they feuded. They feuded, yeah. And, uh. Yeah, that was 2004, I think that started up. So and that was the beginning of the end of Evolution, and Triple I talked about it. Triple H just had his match with Batista, so it's kind of like the Evolution reunion tour, kind of Triple H. I don't know okay. if he's on his way out. I don't think he'll ever stop wrestling. But uh, I went Triple H. I don't know. I thought Triple H for some reason. He's the Booker. He can, you know. I don't, that's why I went with him. And I was wrong. Randy Orton won. You had Randy Orton. Uh, Double D had a Randy Orton by DQ. He said something like he thought Triple H would grab the hammer, you know, use it, hit him with his hand. Um, but he went with a clean win, and Randy Orton was victorious. Yep. So I was at this point, I was pretty much out of the so running. The um, at this point, I had one, two, three. Oh no, the Kofi Kingston match still has. We still got to get to. So at this point, I had four points, three points actually, and you had one, two. You should cross them out after. Three, four. You were up. You were up to four to two, or three, whatever I said. Anyways, you're winning at this point, and it comes up. Tricky for Joe. Yeah, clearly, <laughs> not a good. Okay, so we get to the Kofi Kingston, Dolph Ziggler match. Which I think was actually earlier. See how memorable this show was. I didn't remember where it came in, but it was Ziggler versus it's a new Kofi. Yes, it is. We all had Kofi as the winner of that match, which he did prevail against Dolph Ziggler. Uh, so the Battle Royal, we all kind of randomly 
We didn't know who was in it last week, so we all just kind of made picks. I picked Elias, you had picked Kevin Owens, who did not work the show. So, so you guys gave me a new pick, and I did. ended up picking... My, well, the rules were I had to, I was allowed to see who came out down the ramp just in case the next person I picked also wasn't in the match. So they gave me that little bit of a, you know, that little bit of a leg up on the competition, I guess, even though the guys they picked ended up both being in the match. So And I actually did really well, like for picking Elias on right? the spur of the moment on top of my head last week. I uh, just said Elias, and then I thought, oh man, Samoa Joe, I thought about all these other guys after. Yep, but I same. stuck with Elias, and you know, he came in number two, losing to... Mansoor. Who was a... If I knew he was in it, I'm going to be honest, I may have Mansoor, M-A-N-S-O-O-R. And congratulations to that guy, big yeah, achievement, man, out, of the out of nowhere to win. I hadn't been on TV for a year, which brings me to my point of maybe if I knew that guy was in, the Rumble winner, like, hmm, you know, has been on TV in here, he's in his home country, maybe he's going to go over. I, I agree. I didn't know who he was, personally, but like I said, good for him, going over, big pop he got for being the hometown guy, so. My, my, pick, was, uh, my pick was The Miz, and I think he made it to at least the top ten, so at least my second pick did all right, but your pick did. He came right in, and I have to admit, I'm happy for that, that you guy six, that I he think. did what he did, but I was yeah. like, oh man, I'm going to win this. And which would have put me back in because if I would have won that, and then the next match, I still had a chance. Which, yeah. who cares? Because guess what? I picked the wrong match in the next match, too. It was Goldberg versus Triple or, uh, Undertaker versus Triple, Triple, Triple Undertaker. Triple Undertakers, three Undertakers. Um, Crush and maybe uh, Glenn Jacobs in disguise. Agreed. No. Um, it was Triple A. No, it would be, it would be, Gal it would be, uh, Riley. Just give me the match. What match was it? Tell us. Take it. It was Goldberg versus the Undertaker. It was. And what they call the Goldberg. What they call the dream match, which I never thought of it as a dream match personally. It's two guys who never fought each other. Yeah. Basically, is what happened. Do you ever yeah. think of it as back in the day, Undertaker? I wish Undertaker and Goldberg would fight. I don't think anybody said that. No. Well, like we said last so episode, it was left it was over. Like it was two guys who never fought each other. Yeah. Let's do Undertaker. it. Which is cool. Right, Goldberg and Stone Cold. Yeah. That's cool. And Undertaker and Sting. That's the matches, That's the matches that, that we everybody see. wanted to see. Yeah. Wanted to see. So we got tonight in a skid mark of a match. I'm sorry, I don't. Oh, it was bad. The ending, I believe, was, <laughs> I think it was. Well, it was I don't. Up. I I just. You're not just saying he's going for two stone. Don't say everything is bad. He, and he just I don't dropped. Know. I just. He just dropped the under, or Undertaker. dropped Goldberg, and then he went with a choke slam and finished him. He. So Goldberg went for a power, like slam, for a, a power slam, mm -hmm. and, and he was going to do, oh, you know, like the slip oh, slam, oh, flip over tombstone oh, reversal. Yeah, and he dropped. And it was like, where are we at here? Give me, give me your Kofi. Kofi. So Kofi. he had him up over his shoulder for the power slam. Yeah. And instead yep. of landing like this, yep. he kind of went power slam, yep. and then ooh, it landed on his butt. Oh jeez. So then he was like, okay, I'm just gonna get up the right way, pick him up. And it was like, you know, maybe it wasn't like up here chokes, it was like a uh, here chokes. And just point being in a in a high profile match, when have you ever seen the other when's the last time you saw the Undertaker room with a choke slam? You know what I mean? That was obvious I that it was finish. I think a rush finish. Yeah, I yeah. Have, because they screwed up the tombstone spot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I that sure sucked. Undertaker yeah. did look Furious, kind of mad after the match, a like upset bit. maybe with so. himself. Maybe. Um, you know, I'm sure when he sees the check, he'll be all right. <laughs> Probably okay. But uh, bad match overall. Uh, Goldberg went for that takedown there, where it was really sloppy. But he like I said, the when the, when the, the match spears. was going on. It's not like we ever were like, oh, Goldberg's gonna have a good match tonight. He never really had a great match. You know what? So. He hit him with three spears. He went for the jackknife. No, he did hit him with a jackhammer. He did hit him. He did hit him. Well, it was... Or jackhammer. He hit him with a jackhammer, but he almost dropped Undertaker on his head. Yeah, it felt like a jackhammer brain buster. DDT. Brain buster. Jack brain. It was, uh... That's a better name. It was, uh... He had him up, and then instead of flipping him all the way over, like, the power slam, it was more like... Landed like brain buster. Personally... I've had enough of yeah, the Saudi Super Ooh. Show. I've had enough talking about the Saudi Super Show. I really, I wasn't impressed at all. And when you got a guy like me who, you know, every so often, maybe on the pay-per-views, I try to give WWE a chance. They don't deliver on the pay. The Fastlane pay-per-view about two months ago, that was okay. 
Everybody loved Mania. I didn't. I, I thought it was okay. I don't like anything. I'm sorry. Sorry. So let's uh, go through this. Uh, yeah, what else we got on match. the show? Last match, sir. That was the last match. That was the last match. That was, we're moving on from the Saudi stuff. That was the big main event. What, what happened with Kofi and, D and Ziggler? We went through that. Yeah, I missed that. You missed it. <laughs> I mean, it was all over the place. Shit. I um, said no. All right. Yeah, we it was a uh, Ziggler lost. Okay. And we all picked Kofi. Yeah. We knew. Oh no, we didn't go through it. We just said we we're going to and then we No didn't. we did. I said we won, I'm pretty sure. Well, let's we'll pretend we'll we did. Back. <laughs> yeah, let's pretend we did. Ziggler won. Doesn't I mean Ziggler lost. I don't know what's going on. Anyway. Uh, Kofi won. We all knew he did. That match didn't matter. So true. double D won. The, for now, for now, he's the current, he won the first ever prediction. Um, so if he wants score. his belt, he can come on the show and get it. The score is... Here's where we put up the graphic. I have... One, two, three, four, five, six. I got six. Double D has seven, and Joe in absolute last place is with... Four. I thought that was... Five. That's no. four. That's a, that's the oh, last game. Right, second. Right. You don't get any extra points for four. That? I was proud of my like player. I guess I won the battle royal. Well, then I don't get half my point for calling that he was going to attempt to cash in or that Lucha no, was we, we won because they beat I him lost. I, I lost. That's all there is to it. So I'm not going to try to debate it. But yeah, my prediction. Counts in horseshoes and hand my prediction. Right? Okay, Jr. No, I'm just kidding. I was just wondering about like <laughs> battle royals. How do you guys score that? I did well, the best get, in the battle royale. Yeah, we get a point because my guy came in second. You know, your guy wins. Win. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. And even if my guy like he came in second, it doesn't matter. I got smoked on the show. But me and you, you won. I went with some crazy and just whatever, man. I called a no contest. Why? Because I could. So I did. All right, where are we at? What are we doing next yeah. on the show? <laughs> we got Matt here. Why don't we talk to Matt about some stuff? Indeed. The, like, uh, the, not, not just the Impact. We talked briefly about the Impact Super Show is coming to the, the television table. <laughs> I've got the Super Show on in mind. Bam, 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 bam. Um, but it is a Super Show. If you're at those shows, you're going to get two nights of uh, Impact Pro Wrestling. Which is all wrestling. is for sale if you want to uh, contact us. These guys are right there. Um, you, you know where to find me there. Um... But yeah, those two shows you get—it's right, all we'll wrestling. Yeah, we'll uh, you're gonna get two great cars, Robbie and Dan, at the St. Clair Gym. That's huge. Let's see if we can name everybody on this poster. Michael Elgin's gonna be there. Brian right, let's, Cage. Let's start, let's start at the. Let's go around in a circle. That's what. Wait, 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 clockwise. So the yeah, Deaners. Deaners. Uh huh. Follow Uh huh. Su Young. Young. Uh huh. Sideward. Sidebar. Brian Cage. Brian Cage. Killer Cross. Rosemary. Uh huh. You got it? No. Tay Valkyrie? Yeah, Tay Valkyrie. Aiden Prince? Oh, man. We got on the show? Never seen that guy in my life. A trainer. Uh, Johnny Impact, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Nitro. Johnny, Johnny insert gimmick here. Mayor Slam Town himself, though, Johnny Impact. Indeed. Ah, more politicians. Eddie Edwards. El Howard Reverso. Russo. First ever guest on the Idol Threat Wrestling Podcast. Ace First Austin. Interview, isn't he? Yeah, interview. Indeed. Interview. Oh. Moose. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy you know, Dreamer. You want to host the show? Tommy Dreamer's going to be there? Tessa, Tessa Blanchard. Blanchard. Maybe the biggest name in wrestling today, really. <laughs> Can't argue. Michael Elgin. The Smoke Show. Scarlet Bordeaux. Rich Lawn. And... <laughs> All the OBE guys are there, Ratman Fulton, Jake and Dave Chris, and Sammy Callahan. They'll all be there. It's gonna be a uh, make sure we'll all be a part of it in some way, right? Of everything. I think I got plans that day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah setting up the free Yeah, the show I that's the day before. Oh yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the show if Matt wasn't there, the show may not go on. That's this is very go true. On. It'll go on. Segway! When did you first start training or be actually when was your first introduction to wrestling in general ever in life? What was stay the first up time you were on that question? What? Stay up all night on that question? No, I stayed up for just stood up for five minutes. Or okay, that's, four, that's pretty good. That's usually the first question you ask somebody, right? Um uh, it's channel hopping. When I was about four years old. Didn't want to watch Alvin and the Chipmunks at the time. 
Saturday, uh, Saturday morning ish. It's channel hopping and uh, it's uh, Randy Savage cutting a promo on whoever. May have been Jimmy Snuka. For some reason, I think it was Jimmy Snuka, but I don't think it actually was Jimmy Snuka. That's four. <laughs> Anyhow, and then, uh, so I was like, oh. One thing you remember like, Macho Man. Yeah, I remember Macho. He had his orange bandana on. He had his big, huge glasses, right, with the white rims. And uh, so I'm like, what's this? So just watched the rest of it, and it ended with him hitting the elbow off the top. Oh. And I just looked at it, and I said, man, I want to do that. That's amazing. And so from there on, from there on, I have never hit an elbow drop off the top rope. <laughs> That makes sense. Because now I realize that that's a whole lot of impact on me. Yeah, fair enough. Elbow. Now my yeah. elbow's already crappy. I feel that. Yeah. So yeah, would uh, would bring. So you pursue this wrestling thing though, obviously. Because I wanted to do it want forever. To so bad and tell so us when, how, when did you start getting involved? With yeah. The, uh, start training. How did I get involved? How did you get involved with Can Am? Like, how did you find out about Can Am? Because now I think a lot more people know about Can Am because of all the, yeah, uh, the ratings have been. But. You were there, Social what, media. 20 years ago almost? Yeah. Fair enough. Close to that. Um, it wasn't as well known, obviously. Like, it was more about, like, maybe the best kept secret in wrestling school. Yep. So how did you find out about it? Buddy, man. Uh, my original plan was to go to Texas because at the time, Shawn Michaels had his school open and he was my favorite, even though I'm a Canadian and, you know, I'm Shawn and Brett. I'm like, yeah, I kind of mm -hmm. lean more to Shawn because he's a little more flashy. I like Flash. That's fair. And uh, so that was my plan. My plan was to go to Texas. And Everything then, is bigger. Everything's bigger in Texas. And then uh, I actually went to church with my mom. Okay. It was the church she went to was doing some gift wrapping thing at Walmart for Christmas, and she's like, "Hey, you want to come to this?" Cool. I'm like, "Okay, cool." So I wrap wrap presents, and then like. I, do. I hung out with their youth group that night, and then went to church the next day, and it just kind of kept going. I was trying to pick up girls at church. Logical. Whatever. Logical. I was like 15. Right there. Hey, man. Exactly. Did you, uh, hey, hey, did you, did you have any of that? You want to practice your hand? Blood body or what? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good, eh? That's some pretty good stuff, right? I like that blessed little piece of bread. Exactly. No disrespect, though. Right. No, actually, no. No disrespect. No, no, we're good. Cool. Anyway, and uh, there was a dude there that uh, he was a wrestling fan. He was part of, part of BCW. Cool. I'm not going to name names. People may call him something that rhymes with Spreacher. <laughs> uh, anyhow, and, uh, and met him, and we kind of hit it off because we like wrestling. Yep. Right? And... That's why you hit it off. Right. Yeah. Was... Yep. And... found out that we had, uh, that there was a wrestling school here. Oh, that's... And... Yeah. And who would have, who would have been at the school at the time, right? When I started? Yeah. Like, yeah. who would have been trainer, uh, had you trainer. know, this is what year two? Scott was doing... This was... 2001? By the time I actually so the, uh, and at this time too, wow. Border City's running quite a few shows. Like they're yeah. regularly because the, the, obviously the wrestling boom is still open. Yep. In fact, it's ECW it's around this time has closed, and Border City was kind of picking up an influx of those guys. Yep. So yeah. Anyways, who was there when? Uh, um, who's, who's around in the school first? You said Scott was a yeah, trainer. Scott was. No, he wasn't really there. He, okay. was, he was actually on the road working a lot. Okay, yeah, so he was, he was still, he was he was still an active wrestler, more of an active wrestler than a semi-active like yep. he is today. I was, uh, was he, was he, what was he doing, like, where, where was he working over there? Yeah. He was... This is a few years before he went to TNA. That's what I was yeah. thinking yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, This yeah, is a few like years like before, though. This is, so. yep. This is was, the end of the Attitude Era kind of era. Right, 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 right. I don't right. exactly know where he was working. Because I never asked. Truth. But... He Maybe was, we'll be able to ask. Well, he worked in, He did work at ECW briefly around that time because that's where he befriended a lot of these guys. Yep. He, he oh, had yeah. some non-televised yep. or dark matches for ECW, but he made a lot of contacts, I believe, when he was in the ECW. Yep. He was well-liked in ECW. Yeah, exactly. Um, so he wasn't really... Like, he was there. He'd pop in, you know, when he wasn't 
on the road, right? Right. Um, but I think Bobby Clancy was, was kind of running Irish things Bobby at the time. Clancy. Yeah. And uh, another another small man like myself, so he was kind of he was like, wow, I really like like that guy. Look up to him. Good shots. And uh, who else was there? Chris Valentino, another, another Essex boy like me. And. Um, Larry Destiny was there. Larry Destiny. I was, just, I was just talking about Larry earlier. Yeah. Big, 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 he was my favorite back in the varsity wrestling. With but, uh, regular that's guys. awesome. That's awesome. Yep. And so, yeah, those were, you know, the guys that were training us. Um, that's where I met Johnny Bravo. Johnny um, Bravo. Amazing Nate Madsen. Yes. You had Nate on the show before. Yep. I saw that interview. Yep. And, uh, a couple weeks back. Amazing that's school. Guy. Yep. School amazing yeah. guy. Looked amazing. Amazing. Amazing mate. That's actually what's in my phone when he texts me. It says, that's amazing. That's amazing. That is lovely. And, uh, but students that started at the time, uh, when I was, when I, when that was there, when I started, um, A1. Okay, A1. Yeah, P. Williams. Oh, Canadian Destroyer. Canadian Destroyer, yep. And sh around that time, uh, Chris Saban. What about, uh, Chris Saban. What, uh, what's your face? Angelina Love, was she there around that time, too? She was training there, was she not? No, she wasn't training. She worked some shows around. Yeah, she worked. She worked. I thought she was doing that. I thought, I thought that was... No, I think she was trained up in Toronto. Okay. I don't, I don't completely quote me on that, but maybe by Derek Wilde. Okay. So yeah, that was... That was who was there when I, uh, when I started. What about uh, what about Alex Shelley? Was he was he around there with with Saban at all, or was that was that a little later? Lo and no behold, the people who are our tag team partners aren't actually attached at the hip. Well, <laughs> no, I know, but I mean, like maybe they because I did I like did Alex Shelley tra train at Can Am as well, or um, Shelley worked out at Can Am. Um, he had. I'm not entirely was sure. Was he from Jude Martini training. School? Is that where he comes out of? Or? Might have. Okay. What is there reason about you, anyways, Matt? So. Yeah, yeah. Right. Ask me about everybody yeah, else everybody. in the world. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Who cares I want to know the story. I'm so sure. you're training there. How long is it before you get, uh, you know, your big shot in the first first match in the. Or if, actually, you know what? Step back. Just, was there ever a point where you're like, oh man, this wrestling, I don't know if I can do it? Or you were just so like, from what you saw when you were a kid, Macho Man, you are like, I'm going to make it at all costs. I want to be a wrestler. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, I had actually... So then, okay, so let's talk about your first match. Okay. Where was your first match? The first match when was, it was... Who, what, wait, wait, what happened? Big Chuck Wagon. Big Chuck Wagon. At... Diamonds, the, uh, the parking lot of Diamonds, yeah. which isn't there anymore no, on the corner of Tecumseh and Jefferson. I think it's a, I think it's a Mexican place now. Might be a breakfast place. Might be both. Maybe it's put in half. Yeah, it could be. Okay. Anyway. And it's a breakfast. Mexican it was it was shortly after. Sorry. Right. Sorry, <laughs> man. Didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, it was shortly after 9/11. Okay. Like a week or so after 9-11. What a great time in the first match. All right. Nah. The so it was, yeah, it had to be like a couple weeks after. It was still nice though because it was a parking lot match. Yep. Right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So it's like yeah, I was Okay. Yeah, yeah. So how did that match come about? I think I've heard this story before, but for everybody. It came about because somebody couldn't make it over the border. They needed an extra body. I wasn't actually supposed to work on the show. I was actually the timekeeper. Oh. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know, Chuck came out, came down to the ring with a giant bucket of chicken wings. I think because I think Diamonds was famous for their chicken wings or something. That makes sense. Yeah. I was a little younger. I remember when they had the shows at Diamonds. What, I never diamonds? did attend. It was just a bar. Oh my God! I always thought it was a jewelry store. Uh -huh. That's hilarious. I could see that, I guess. Though. They had a giant freaking yeah, diamond, diamond outside. Diamond, outside. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't yeah. say anything else other than diamonds. So. Except diamonds bar and grill. Yeah. You know? I'd have been the bar and grill. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, this match with Big Chuck. Yeah. yeah. He's, a guy, he's, he's a big guy. He's a big, yeah, he's a big, big, uh, big redneck. Where is his uh, where's his overalls? Is he still working? I haven't seen Chuck in 15. Years, okay. I'm gonna say I'm not saying he's not working. I think okay. I've seen I've seen that he is working, but I haven't actually personally seen him in years. 
Um, so he comes down to the ring and eating his big eating his chicken wings and throws one at me or something like that. And, ha ha ha. Sauce on the apron. Exactly. No, I wasn't in the ring, so it was okay. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. okay. And I wasn't as picky about that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> my first thing, my first thought about that was just like, he threw a chicken wing at you in the ring? No, oh, he threw a chicken, at, chicken wing at me while I was sitting there. I held chicken. Yeah, so just <laughs> chicken. And, uh, and he kind of turned his back and I you know, got all steamed and got in there and bucked up. Showed him my like, fire? Yep, showed him my fire and yeah. Actually, my first match was my first, uh, my first win. Yeah, that's all right. That's actually Start awesome. Out on, on your feet. Yep. There you go. So th then did they see that match and say like, oh, he's got, he's ready for in-ring action now. Are you a regular wrestler now, maybe? At this point? Um, like, had you had practice matches before that match? Well, yeah, because you've seen practice matches in school. I mean, I yeah, but right? I'm my, I'm I've seen, I'm, I'm a, I've even seen practice matches at the school. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so yeah, yes, I did. had many practice matches at the time. And yeah, I was. So you're ready to be an in-ring worker now at this point. So oh, yeah, I'm sure I had. How about uh, how did you got like come up with the character of yourself? At that point, were you wrestling? You did, you were just a bell guy, right? Yeah. He pulled I you was in, just so you're just Matt in yep. the ring. You're playing yourself. I was the big honest, underdog yeah. in this squash match, which yeah. is supposed to be a squash match. You, yeah. So that's pretty cool. That's gonna be a cool feeling. Yeah, with the, the crowd got behind you right away, obviously, because you're going against the yep. heel guy. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They you come to the ring and you're that underdog. You're one of them. So they obviously you're over yep. right away. Exactly. Much. It's a good way to start out. Heck yeah, I agree. So how do you spell Matt Rocks? It's basically Matrix. If you take out the I and put it in O. So it's like Uno Bomber. Yes, it's like it's like Uno Bomber. <laughs> Uno Bomber. It's just back to Uno Bomber. One more bomber. Okay, so um, you, you won the Dutch Chevalier Battle Royal. It was the last time I saw you in the ring. Yep. Which was just, uh, maybe was that your biggest accomplishment? That that is, to you, to be honest, you told me before, but for everybody else, you knew Doug, and he was one yep. of your first friends in the business. Exactly. Say. Yep. So, um, tell us about that, like the meeting, like when you won it, like, and you feel honored, like you were part of the people that have won the, the Chevalier Battle Royal. Yeah. Was it's, right now, it's a small, there's only a few guys that have won it, right? It's been around for how long? It's been around for it. Decent yeah, I guess. I'm not, but it's a, it's a lot of times given to a guy who's been there. Maybe not always the most noticed guy, but yep. just worked his butt off for yep. Border City. So it was definitely you felt you were happy to win. Oh yeah, I was. Sure. I was very very happy to win. It was like a. It was, honestly, it was like a really surreal moment. I was really happy to see that match with you too because I'd set up on the ring, but I always would. Matt would always go on first at the shows and I'd be like, you see my match, you see my match. And I would always miss your matches because yeah. I had to work till right. 7 and then I would fly there. And so I got to see that one and it was cool to see you win the battle royale as well. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was really big. It was like, like just not just to actually win it, but everybody that was... Right. Um, yeah, so Nate, the door. pinning Nate was important because if, without pinning Nate, I wouldn't have won. And uh, so yeah, Nate was there, and he was there when I had started training. And Bravo was there, and he was the ref. He was also there when I had started training. And Bobby Clancy and Otis Apollo presented me with the trophy. Irish Bobby Clancy. Irish Good Bobby show. Clancy. Good show. Yeah. And so everybody there were really important to me, even though they don't, might not have known it. They might now. Um, so it was a big, big moment, and to be honest, to be honest, sorry, it was surreal. It was like it took me a couple of days to take it in. Actually, maybe even like a week. And I was talking to uh, Princey, Aiden Prince, and about that situation where you know that night he won tag titles for the first time, and I won that, and and we're it's like yeah, it's just kind of like in a haze for a couple of days, and it was just one of those big big thing. Did you feel like like you were like like you know how when you watch wrestling you're like it's like a like a super like comic booky like universe like it's like a it's larger than life. Did you feel larger than life? Like is that like kinda of what that haze was like, wow I can't like this is real, like this is awesome. Yeah. It kinda but I don't know, it, it all just kinda felt like a like a big blur. 
that's that's how I feel every time I, my band plays a show. It like after you're like, okay, that whole half hour felt like, oh wait, we're done. There's, yep. What song's next? We played them all. Wait, what? Yep. Oh, and you're just like, what spot's next? Yep. Or, oh wait, I just won. I just did that. Yeah. So exactly. with, <laughs> with that match signify, uh, you know, like the highlight or that's of your career, of your career so far. Yeah. To be honest, that's like my WrestleMania moment. Really, right? It's the highlight of your career. Yep, it's it is. Awesome. It's really important because, like, Doug was the first yeah, friend I had ever made. Yep. So, I remember you told him that. <laughs> um, okay, so th that was uh, a few shows ago, so you've been working pretty regularly still. With, uh, uh, I know. Here and there. I, I have a shoot job. Yeah. That's where I work regularly. Right. For those who don't know uh, who Doug Chevalier is, could you, could you explain who he is? Doug Chevalier is the man who trained everybody that started wrestling at Can-Am and BCW. Um, trained Scott, he trained Nate, he trained right, right. Kevin Nate Bravo, right. Clancy, he's he's like, I don't know, the way I see it is like, he's like the grandfather of BCW and Can-Am. The granddaddy of Can-Am yeah. wrestling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. And Border City uh, continues to on. We got a show, big show next week coming up for Border City. Uh, the uh, Father's Day, fantastic Father's Day show that you're yep. a part of. Yes, yes, I will be a part of that. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. I've heard slight rumblings that it may involve seven other people, oh. but. That's I don't cool. know if that's like nothing set in stone. That may be a total of. It's a good eight, show though. Like if, uh, next Saturday, they're uh, about four o'clock. It starts right yep. at the St. Clair Sportsplex yep. at St. Clair College. Uh, lots of matches. Lots of the Re Border City regulars are all there. Yep. Carlo yep. Kong, Cody Diener, their impact, and mm, you got yes. Aiden Prince, uh, Albert Burso. Johnny Bravo, Matt, Johnny Bravo. The the yeah, usual Matt's guys are gonna get a great show, and it's free. Free. Why, like, why, there? why aren't you there? Right? Well, I'll be on vacation. So yeah, why aren't you there, Mike? We'll be there. We're gonna I'll, I'll be in Winnipeg. And then after uh, the following month, uh, July 7th, we yep. have the Essex Fun Fest. Essex Fun Fest. Uh, we'll be and both show. those shows are, they have like sentimental to yep. you. You like working those shows. Yeah, totally. Um, the, the Father's Day show is great because it's more than a wrestling show. It's, it's an event. Yeah. Like it's it's like a Father's Day. I always refer to it as like a Father's Day festival, because there's always tons of stuff going on. We're just a small part of that. We may be the main event, but we're just one hour of the whole event, right? Right. right. It's an all-day thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I think it starts at like nine, ten. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a morning till evening. Yep. Type of event. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. Cool. Cool. And it's I like that show because. That's always a good show, I always feel, too. Like, if friends of mine wanted to get their kids, you know, they're, hey, I don't know if my kids will like wrestling or not. It's a good... Good warm-up. Yeah, it's exactly. A, it's a good... It's well, free. Like, it's free. So you're not... It's not costing you anything except getting there. Right. And second, it's... Again, it's part of a bigger event. So... Yeah, they don't, they don't, stuff if they don't on, dig right? it, they don't dig it. Does it cost money to do the other activities going on at the Every day there. Snow cones are free. What? Yep. See what you're saying? Right. Yeah. Is there going to be free snow cones Where? at Essex in July? Probably not. It's a fact. It's a... It's... Yeah. That's a money grab. That's, that's a money grab. That's going to be eight dollars. So that's going to be a good show too though. I'm not yep. sure who's yes. all on that card. Uh, it's probably around the like, same... You're gonna see your at BBCW yep. guys. Yep. Your Albert Versos, your Aiden Princes. Mm -hmm. So why was why is the the Essex show so so important to you? Uh, I'm from Essex. Okay. And as as a kid, not even not even as really as a kid because I didn't know like I didn't though there was wrestling at the Fun Fest when I was a kid. There right. really wasn't. But when you know when I became a wrestler, I was like, wow, hey, there's wrestling at the Fun Fest. I want to get on those shows. Right. And I I never have. So this like, also it's like the first time I've wrestled, or I will wrestle in Essex without a mask. No mask. Nice. Yeah. No fish boy this year. So you have wrestled in Essex before, just not at the the, the fest. Not at the fun fest, and fun not fest. and not as with my money maker. Yeah. Yep. Money maker. Yep. Money. 
We got any uh, cool stories from the road of yes, your days sure. in Borders era? Cool stories. You don't, you, you, let you, don't have to, you don't have to name drop because you know. Don't want to name this drop. This is the No Heat podcast. No Heat podcast. No name drops. But. Um. All right. Well, when we were up in Toronto in April, was it for April twenty eighth to twenty ninth? Twenty ninth. All right. Well, April <laughs> April twenty ninth after 28th um 29th. after the show. Uh, the, the last, uh, after the TV tapings, I was gathering up stuff for, uh, Lots of stuff talent. to gather after. Well, obviously. Yeah. But I was gathering up, like, ring attire. Oh, okay, okay, and, okay. Gotcha. Um, it was actually morning of the TV tapings. We were on our way back to Toronto, and we would have been leaving the event from there, right? Because if we had, it was me and Reverse were going to pick you up. Whose story is this? Okay. This yeah, is take taking two. taking over, man. This is take two, and I've changed the story. I'm telling a different story this oh, time. Oh, I changed the story! <laughs> swerve. Oh, now swerve just like Chris's right. birthday. Now we all ended up. Oh. So, anyhow, um, I was looking to see who's Tiara and little crinoline skirt thingy was. It was. Turned out it was Madison Reigns. I did not know this. Oh, I didn't. actually, that makes sense because she comes out as the queen. Yep. Yep, yep. She's a killer queen. Exactly. Yeah. That... And uh, so um, and we're thinking. in the back, and there's a there's a group of us there, and uh, one of the rascals puts on the little tiara, right? Yep. Um, my son was doing that to me. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I don't. Really, I don't know how or why. He even paid that much attention. Seen a lot of rascals. Well, he's seen them, but he doesn't pay that much attention. Right? But, but with yeah. the actual little rascals. Right, right, right. Well, right. oh, maybe. Brown side Forky, you know? Oh, maybe. Yeah. But he probably they didn't knows that better because yeah. two of yeah. them stayed at our house in October. Okay. Right. Right. So, anyhow, the, uh, one of the rascals puts on the tiara, and then uh, one of the knockouts put a wonderful song in my head, Almost Paradise, by... I don't know what the hell his name is, who cares? It's from the Footloose soundtrack. Right? Kenny Loggins? Starts, no, it's not Kenny Loggins. <laughs> I had looked it up to okay. prep. For I have no idea, I've never seen it. Alright, anyhow, yeah. So one of the one of the knockouts who may wear face paint or not decided to just started singing Almost Paradise. <laughs> and like what it wasn't she didn't actually pop the Almost Paradise line, right? It's like, we're knocking on heaven's door. And I'm like, what fucking song is that? Right in my head, and then I'm tearing apart, tearing apart the ring later on. I'm like, it's almost paradise, and that song was in my fucking head for a week. <laughs> oh man, so that's my that's it's my that's scary. my change up stud and bro story. Maybe you're almost in paradise. Or Play the old switcheroo. The old switcheroo. The you old guys ever wonder? Do you ever wonder who's buried in the grave of the guy who invented the old switcheroo? No. Say it. Just say it. Anyway, what's next, Mike? Are we gonna yeah, wrap I, this thing up and get out of here? What do we have here? Well, we have the predictions of the Saudi, which was essentially Double D, the cameraman, is in the lead. I am close in second. Joe's in third. We went through my horrible Corbin, Bar uh, Baron Corbin booking fantasy. Fantasy booking. I don't know it was anything just about wrestling, is what I've learned from this show. <laughs> WWE, that is. Sports entertainment. Sports entertainment. Is great. I like wrestling. Uh, essentially, yeah. Uh, we went through, and that's where we are with the predictions. We'd like um, to thank our guest, Matt, for yes, being here. Yes, thank you so much for being here. Well, can't thank you me. enough. Well, can't wait to have you next time. Yeah, we he have to. No, we're gonna do. He didn't just say that. We, he wanted yes. to do. He didn't just say that, and I it. screwed up. I the didn't man know. It and you couldn't. I didn't know. He just. So by bad. I want Matt to come up with the one he want. No, I'll find one for you. What would you rather do? I'll find, find it. I will find, find it, and we'll get you on a swerve me. Swerve me on it. Once we get a new guest. We'll have three Maybe we'll set tape up something with this the idol coming Tron, out the show. Some, whatever you call your TV Tron. The Froggy Tron 5000. Okay, there he is. We'll bring there it next is. time and we will have one for you. Awesome. Come back whenever you want. You're welcome always. Um, yeah, so that's the show for this week. Sweet. Or Sweet. the second show of this week. Okay. Mike's killing it here as Episode my co host. Episode 9, new co host. Um, yeah, so. Home.
We're gonna sign off for this week. Yes, please. Snap on your Slim Jims. Keep your sports fake and your wrestling real. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Ding and done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For notifications. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>